In 2007, uh, the department published its first communication manual, which was a great outline uh, over the department's communication systems, radio system, CAD systems, and some procedural stuff that was a benefit for the end users. The communication section has just revised the manual, uh, which will provide a great one-stop shop for all the end users for all their communication needs. It provides great detailed information on the CAD system, uh, the radio system, all the other related technologies. Also provides uh, clear direction on repair, replacement procedures, um, detailed outline of all the response plans, the changes to the response plans, um, radio assignment procedures, um, and also now provides and documents what the department expects um, with our best practices for preferred techniques and technology when communicating out on the emergency incident scene. A common theme seen in any NIOSH firefighter line of duty death report is the lack of clarity and discipline regarding communication. Current practices in Fairfax County further perpetuate this fact, as there is no existing format or criteria for each member's communication on the radio, and radio transmissions are usually tied only to the judgment and experience level of the speaker. Radio communication has taken the tenor of a cell phone call, using meaningless phrases like, be advised at this time, and is overly conversational. As a result, the Fire and Rescue Department and the Department of Public Safety Communications, DPSC, has developed a best practice concerning radio communication and the use of proper terminology. The purpose of this training is to examine the many human factors that affect our communication system, review department guidelines regarding communications, discuss radio communication practices, discuss fire ground communications, and to discuss the dispatcher roles. Public safety communications transitioned away from radio codes to plain language years ago in the interest of interoperability. However, this change has resulted in widespread use of conversational language and substantial variation in terminology. Feasibly, the officers from the four engine companies assigned to a building fire could describe incident conditions differently in their on-scene reports. One opportunity we had to do in this communication manual was provide the exact terminology, techniques, and plain language we want our end users out there to communicate to provide a clear and consistent uh, messaging format. And the benefit is not only for the end users in the street, it also provides just as much benefit to the dispatchers. So we're all on the same page communicating and using the common terminology because we know is over the last several years, there's been many different company officers out there that we can report the findings of a primary search, can provide an on-scene report in three to four different formats by trying to standardize, um, provide samples, and uh, put us all on the same page with using the common terminology will just provide a very clear and consistent form of communicating out on the emergency incident scene. Conversational language occupies radio time and is frequently ambiguous. For example, Charlie Division 2, truck 4.5, when you get a chance, I need you to bring a 35-foot ladder to me back here, okay? Versus, truck 4.5 from Charlie Division, 35-foot ladder beside Charlie. The latter eliminates 12 words. Excessive radio traffic has become the new normal. Often, too much radio traffic has prohibited the broadcasting of important and possibly life-saving information. Excessive and unnecessary radio traffic has a negative impact on incident operations. It's difficult for unit officers to make critical conversations or critical transmissions to the command post. It's difficult for the incident commander to convey his or her wishes to the unit officers operating in the IDLH. By having the four C's model in effect, we, we again shorten the time frame that it takes to, re, to express those communications and then deliver the message effectively to the officers and then back to the command post. The Fairfax County Fire and Rescue Department has adopted the four C's communication model in an effort to relay the correct information over the radio. The four C's of communication are connect, convey, clarify, and confirm. The 4Cs model provides the department now with a basic means and outline for providing clear and consistent communication out on the emergency incident scene. Although yet very basic, it is very effective and very simple, but like mentioned before, a very consistent means and model for communicating out on the emergency incident scene. The first C is connect. 
This very basic premise stands for the undeniable principle that before the sender can effectively transmit the desired message, he or she must connect with the receiver. The National Fire Academy command and control method of transmission is preferred. Instead of leading off the transmission with the sender's designator, like the current practice, the sender leads off with the recipient's designator, as we do in our everyday speech. As is the current practice, the sender calls the receiver in the following manner. Engine 408 to Fairfax. In service, CAD's not updating. With the proposed change, all radio communication will take on the following format. Fairfax from command. I'm ready for command channel. The second C is convey. Once connected with the receiver, the sender can convey the message. Engine 408 from command. Engine 408, take your line to floor number two. Radio users must convey their message concisely and to the point. Command has concisely conveyed a directive. It is important to note that there is no conversation here, as there is no room for conversations in incident scene communications. Common phrases such as, I need you to, or are you able to, and pleasantries like please and thank you must be eliminated from all radio transmissions. The third C is to clarify the message delivered by the sender. It confirms not only that the message was received, but also that it was understood. Engine 408 from command. Engine 408, take your line to floor number two. Engine 408 copy, take our line to floor number two. Note that the recipient simply ending acknowledgement of the message with copy does not provide any meaningful information, nor does the sender know if the message was received and understood. The fourth C requires the sender to confirm that the message clarified is the one that was conveyed. Engine 408 from command. Engine 408, take your line to floor number two. Engine 408 copy, take our line to floor number two. Affirmative engine 408. Unit officers are encouraged to connect directly with the receiver rather than speaking through the dispatch center to relay the information because it helps to cut down on the chance that the message gets confused by the dispatcher in relaying it to the other unit and it also saves time allowing more airspace, more radio time for critical communications to take place. Engine 422 to Fairfax, have engine 405 pick up our line at the hydrant on the corner of Alamo and Cimarron. Fairfax to engine 405, are you direct to pick up engine 422's line at the hydrant on the corner of Alamo and Cimarron? Engine 405 is direct. Engine 405 from engine 422. Engine 405. Pick up our line at the corner of Alamo and Cimarron. Engine 405, copy. Pick up the line at Alamo and Cimarron. Engine 409 to Fairfax. I have Medic 409 come to the third floor with their stretcher when they arrive. Fairfax to Medic 409, are you direct to come to the third floor with their stretcher when you arrive? Medic 409 is direct. Medic 409 from engine 409. Medic 409. Come to floor number three with the stretcher. Medic 409 copy, come to floor number three with the stretcher. Affirmative, Medic 409. The water supply report is given from the first arriving engine directly to the second arriving engine, eliminating the need for DPSC to repeat the information. This also reduces extra and often unnecessary radio traffic. During situations when the second arriving engine does not confirm receipt of the water supply report, the fire dispatcher will repeat the information directly to that unit, ensuring effective communication. The on-scene report is given by the first arriving fire department unit at the scene, generally the first arriving engine company, directly to the first due battalion chief. 
It briefly describes the type of incident and conditions upon arrival. Again, the fire dispatcher must remain vigilant to copy all radio traffic to update the CAD as well as to ensure effective communication should a breakdown occur. After the on-scene report is transmitted, the fire officer will exit the apparatus and take a lap of the structure, viewing all sides, performing further size up. The situation report is given directly to the 1st due Battalion Chief after the fire officer completes the lap of the structure. The purpose of the situation report is to size up the situation, describe the extent of the problem, give a brief description of actions they will take, request additional resources, and make a command statement. The fire dispatcher will transcribe all pertinent information into the event summary on the CAD and remain ready to carry out any request of units assigned to the event. The incident commander, usually a battalion chief, will give all progress reports directly to the fire dispatcher on the command channel, if established. Progress reports are radio reports that provide information on the evolution of an incident. Progress reports may indicate that an incident is continuing to escalate or is being brought under control. It's necessary to standardize our radio terminology and use preferred words and phrases so that people have the same understanding of what every word means. Our current model right now uses words like heavy or full involvement, and that means different things to different people depending upon their level of experience. So the object with the preferred communications model and preferred terminology is to get everybody speaking the same language so that one word means one thing all the time. In an effort to eliminate ambiguous words and phrases and to reduce confusion, fire and rescue department personnel should use the following terminology when describing fire and smoke conditions, operational modes, and whenever answering the sender. It's important to use the current and accepted phonetic alphabet for purposes of consistency with NIMS. Looking at a regional approach, the COG jurisdictions have all accepted the fact that now under NIMS we use what has traditionally been known as the aviation or military phonetic alphabet, whereas we did a period of time where we're using the police phonetic alphabet. And it's important so that we are consistent on a regional approach, a global approach, if you will, in this area, that we use the proper phonetic alphabet when expressing radio communications. Our fire rescue dispatchers are trained to be one, proficient, but to secondly, have almost always in mind the safety of the responder. Because we are privy to the information that has been provided by the call taker, and we are aware of other ambient conversations that are taking place on the fire ground, our fire dispatchers are in a unique position that they can assemble that information they can filter that information and they can provide that information as appropriate to the incident commander or other units on the scene. But firefighter safety is foremost in the eyes and the ears of every fire dispatcher. Firefighters assigned to operations perform a myriad of tasks during their 24-hour shifts when not assigned to emergency events. When a call comes in, firefighters drop what they're doing and move to their assigned units while listening to the general announcement GA from the fire dispatcher over the fire station speakers. The second GA is announced as firefighters hurry to don their personal protective equipment and board their fire apparatus, now listening to DPSC on the unit's mobile radio. When they arrive on scene, they exit the apparatus and are listening to updated information on their portable radios. It's obvious that firefighters might not hear pertinent information during this rapid and very dynamic series of events. That's why it is incumbent on the fire dispatcher to bridge this gap. The dispatcher assigned to the FD-01 console is responsible for the timely dispatch of fire and EMS calls on fire channel 4 alpha. In addition to the dispatch of calls, the FD-01 dispatcher is responsible for making announcements and keeping track of the status of all fire and EMS units in the county by monitoring the unit status display. The dispatcher assigned to the FDO2 console monitors fire channel 4 Bravo, which is the response channel. 
the dispatchers assigned to the FDO3 and FDO4 consoles are involved in more of a support role. These dispatchers are responsible for answering fire station direct lines, hospital lines, and incoming lines from other jurisdictions. Also, any callbacks that need to be handled are completed by these dispatchers. The FDO3 and FDO4 dispatchers will handle any working incidents assigned to alternate channels, like 4 Charlie or 4 Delta. Fairfax County DPSC Fire Rescue Dispatchers are some of the best in the world because they want to be. And we provide them the tools to help them be that. To account for the safety of all personnel on an incident, it is still imperative for the dispatcher to record all pertinent information like water supply location on scene report and request for additional resources in the incident notes. In addition, the dispatcher must be able to provide this information if a unit did not copy the original communication. Engine 208 from engine 426. I'm laying alive from the hydrant in front of 4900 Bogart Street. Fairfax to engine 208. Engine 208. Engine 426 is laying a supply line from the hydrant in front of 4900 Beauregard Street. Engine 208 copy, hydrant at 4900 Beauregard Street. The dispatcher will relay pertinent incident supplements to the incident commander or first due battalion chief, like a report of people trapped, unit lineup changes, etc. For incidents involving multiple units from neighboring jurisdictions, the dispatcher should provide those units with one GA only after all of those units mark and route, eliminating the need to repeat the information multiple times. Engine 208 and truck 208 are en route. 10-4 engine 208 and truck 208 at 1412 hours. Battalion 212 is en route. 10-4 battalion 212, engine 208, truck 208 and battalion 212, box 2694 for a fire in a garden apartment. 4904 Beauregard Street, apartment 304. It's going to be for reported kitchen fire. Engine 208, you are second due. Truck 208, you're going to be first due. Battalion 212, you are second due. At 14, 13 hours. What, what's important for everybody to understand is there's a lot of information to take in here. And of course, this is not going to be implemented and, and expected to be full force the next day. This is going to be a, an evolving process. But now, through a collaborative effort, from the communication section, uh, the uniform fire officer staff, uh, DPSC, the fire dispatchers, their supervisors, and the operations staff. The end result here is going to be a, a very clear, consistent uh, product um, that's now well documented that's going to assist and uh, help us achieve what we're looking for out there in the emergency incident scene, uh, which indeed may seem like it's minimizing incident communications, but, but what the end result is here, it's just providing everybody with what the clear expectation is. Keep everything clear, concise, to the point, which is going to help us obviously achieve the success we're looking for.